Hey hey, Ace Audits here and the day has arrived to share the follow up from the Glossop Public Footpath 81 video, which many of you have been asking about. Now before we get into it, I want to say thank you to all in the Ace community who have been really supportive while I've been out of action with injury. Um, I really appreciate all of your kind words and for bearing with me. Now although the recovery is ongoing, you will be glad to know that Snoopy and I have been able to get back out there filming new content this week, so watch this space. Also, if you enjoy watching my videos, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss my latest videos when they get released. It's definitely one of the best ways that you can support my channel. So let's dive right in. Now, for anyone not already aware, I posted a video to my channel in October where I had discovered a public footpath in Woolley Bridge near a town called Glossop which had been completely blocked off. Now the link to that video is at the top of this video and it's also in the video description as well. Now the footpath and its line are clearly marked on the Ordnance Survey map and also on the official definitive map, which is maintained by Derbyshire County Council. So officially it is a live active public footpath, but completely blocked to the public at both ends. Now this section of footpath runs between two buildings. One is uh, Glossop Caravans Service Centre and the other is a former Travis Perkins site which as I understand is now owned and used by Glossop Caravans um, as a storage area. Now the footpath line runs from the A57 Road Woolley Bridge along the dividing boundary line of these two properties on the former Travis Perkins side to a bridleway the BW177, which is also known as the NCN62. The footpath is blocked at both ends and is also blocked by a housing development further along, but that's not relevant to my video. As a side note, the NCN62 is a 210 mile long cycle route, which stretches all the way from Fleetwood in Lancashire, all the way across to Selby in West Yorkshire. It's uh, quite an interesting routes and if you want to know more about it I'll leave a link in the video description. So during the video I went into Glossop Caravans and I had a lengthy chat with a man who I think was a member of their management team about the footpath. Um, he had been there a very long time. Now the main points from the conversation were that he had worked there for over 30 years and he claimed that there had never been a physical footpath there in that time. Um, he claimed that he had no knowledge of a footpath that was supposed to be there and he was of the opinion that the Ordnance Survey map and the official definitive map were wrong, which is uh, laughable really. Um, and he was also not concerned that the footpath had been removed. He also indicated that they would only be bothered if the local authority were to approach them. I finished up the video by flying Snoopy over the line of the footpath, which clearly shows it has been uh, completely obliterated. It's now concreted over and has basically formed part of the yard. Um, unfortunately, many public footpaths and right of ways have met a similar fate and all too often by stealth, which means it's been illegally removed um, with the intention of hoping it gets forgotten about over many years. Now, to remove a public footpath requires a public consultation, which costs quite a bit of money. Uh, to do it without a public consultation is basically illegal. After I posted my video to YouTube, uh, one of my subscribers with access to land registry information sourced the documents for this site. So a massive thank you to Randgate for sending me the information. Uh, now the section within the documents relating to the footpath is section 13.4.3, which states to carry out such works at its own expense as may be necessary to realign the public footpath numbered 81 between points D and E on the plan annexed to a diversion order dated the 1st of October 1981. I will put the links to these documents in the video description. Now that's 42 years ago when the landowners were supposed to have addressed the footpath but they didn't. Instead of doing what was on this uh, documented order, the landowner obliterated it illegally by stealth or they allowed it to be obliterated illegally by stealth. Either way, that's bad. Now all this time has gone by and they hoped nobody would notice. So where is the accountability? So at this point I began contacting various bodies 
Um, first of all, I wanted to make the local branches of the Ramblers Association aware. So I reached out to the Tameside group and also the High Peak group. Now, sadly, at the time this video got posted on my channel, um, I had no response from the High Peak group. Um, Tameside Ramblers, however, did reply and they were very helpful. So although they're just out of the area, their group secretary, Prue, was able to forward my query to another organisation called the Peak and Northern Footpath Society, whom I was previously unaware of. So I received a response from their footpaths inspector called Bill. It was a chap called John who actually handled the emails between me and Bill. Um, but basically what Bill sent back was, um, hi John, thanks for the message. I spent some time looking at this before I consulted John, who was dealing with Derbyshire County Council footpath issues at the time. Uh, if I'm a bit long winded, sorry, but I'm trying to put it in context. Um, I inspected or tried to inspect, as it turned out, Glossop footpath 81 in October 2017. Not long after I took over the Glossop area for the PNFS. Here's my reports. Um, Obstruction. FP81 seems to have been obliterated at some time in the past. There is no footpath where it should have left the A57 road heading alongside Glossop Caravan's premises and into Travis Perkins' stockyard. The bridleway BW177 can be seen through the trees at the far side of the stockyard, but there is no means of access to where it should cross the bridleway. Along the bridleway, there is a short ginnel leading onto a housing estate which may represent the remnants of the original footpath. Before I recorded my report at the time in 2017, I made an official visit to try to follow the line on the right-of-way map, which is what I called the definitive map. I marched across Travin Travis Perkins' yard, taking care to be very visible and avoiding wagons in the yard being loaded from forklift trucks. A guy soon came to speak to me and I explained my purpose, showed him the map I had printed. He was quite polite, but his map reading skills were on par with my knowledge of building materials. Um, he assured me there had never been a footpath there and that the map pointed to an area much nearer Wally Bridge. Glossop Footpath 81 was detailed and sketched in the late David Frith's book, Pathwise in Glossop and Longdendale, published sometime in the early 1970s, before he came to Glossop in 77. So the obstruction was likely made sometime in the late 70s or early 80s. I asked John why the right-of-way map continues to show a footpath that clearly hasn't existed for decades and was informed that extinguishing a right-of-way requires a public inquiry. So who would fund the public inquiry? unlikely Glossop Caravans or Travis, Travis Perkins would, and that seems to be the unsatisfactory situation as it currently stands. I also received a follow-up email from Bill, which um, said, Hi John, have Ace Audits read my email um, regarding the present situation on public footpath 81, as PNFS see it. Yes, the footpath should not have been obliterated decades ago, we can question whether the HPBC, High Peak Borough Council or Derbyshire County Council were aware that a public footpath was removed seemingly by stealth. But the fact it's water under the bridge now, unless Travis Perkins, Derbyshire County Council or anyone else is willing to pay up front for a public inquiry, which might or might not be successful. It's extremely unlikely that PNFS as a charity run and funded entirely by volunteers, would be willing or able to take the risk. So that's the unfortunate and unsatisfactory situation we're in now, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, yeah, I also contacted High Peak District Council, but they replied saying they don't deal with the public rights of way. And to direct any uh, relevant queries to Derbyshire County Council, Highways and Public Rights of Way. So after that, uh, I received an email from another subscriber who is asked to remain anonymous. Now, they've been in touch with Derbyshire County Council's right of way team and they forwarded on this following email response to me. So it said, many thanks for your inquiry concerning Glossop Footpath 81. 
I visited this particular footpath in March this year after Public Rights of Way received a similar inquiry through the High Peak MP's office. Unfortunately, the public footpath is obstructed in its entirety on the Glossop Caravan site by the Service Centre and Associated Security Caravan Storage Yard. Um, during the development of the industrial units, the definitive line of the public footpath was not considered in the planning phase. High Peak Borough Council not consulting with Derbyshire County Council's Highway Department. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Um, how embarrassing. So we also note that the line of the public footpath is also obstructed by the mm -hmm. housing estates to the east of Bridalway 177. Again, due to a lack of consultation during the planning phase. Since the acquisition of the site from Travis Perkins by Glossop Caravans, no further development requiring planning permission have been submitted to High Peak Borough Council's planning department. Um, any future development that requires planning permission should allow for the legal line of the public footpath and the County Council would be consulted and asked to comment on any application prior to approval. Whilst this may be frustrating for you and the general public, Derbyshire County Council will consider that due to the continued occupied status of the site, it is not currently possible to reinstate the line of this public footpath. The issue with the definitive line runs through the housing estates will be looked into further as and when time and resources allow. I trust that this clarifies the position of Derbyshire County Council's public rights of way team. So after reading this, I then contacted the very same right-of-way assistant and I got the following response. Good morning. Thank you for your inquiry and following email regarding the obstructed footpath at the Glossop Caravan site. I can confirm that the public rights-of-way acknowledge the situation concerning this footpath. Your YouTube follower may have passed on my email which outlined the issue with public rights-of-way not being consulted with by the High Peak Borough Council during the previous planning phase. This unfortunately happens too often and further work is then required. All I can provide to you at the moment is that the issues with this footpath will be looked into and addressed when resources allow within the public rights of way team. It will be my colleagues who deal with the public path orders who will be tasked with this in the future. My role is focused on inspections within the high peak. So at this point we arrive at an impasse. So to move forward, as far as I'm aware, there either needs to be one, a public inquiry to remove the footpath from the official definitive map, but this would need to be paid for by someone. Um, two, the line of the public footpath to be moved, ideally to the southern boundary of the former Travis Perkins site, where there is a straight line through a strip of unused land between the A57 and the bridle path. Um, three, the original line of the footpath to be reinstated. Or four, wait for a planning application in the future which addresses the footpath, which uh, is unlikely given the amazing communication there between High Peak and Derbyshire. In my mind, option two seems to be the best option. As there's a bit of land there not being used where they could just reroute the footpath from point A to point B, job done. So yeah, the situation is that Glossop Caravans are so far unwilling to cooperate without involvement of uh, Derbyshire County Council. Um, the Derbyshire County Council right of way team are so far seem unwilling to take action and they choose to blame the High Peak District Council. Um, now, I am but one person and I've done what I can uh, in this matter to highlight the issue, uh, bring it into the public domain um, with the intention to try and get something done about it. Now, if Glossop Caravans and Derbyshire County Council received lots of complaints and requests to take action on this matter, ideally to reroute the footpath along that southern boundary of the former Travis Perkins site, there is always the chance that they could be encouraged to get this matter sorted out. Now, Derbyshire County Council are ultimately the authority who have the power and the ability to hold the landowners to account and to get Glossop Footpath 81 restored. So I'll leave this with you all, the ACE community, to pursue if you wish to do so. It has definitely been an interesting investigation and I hope you've all enjoyed the coverage of it. So yeah, have a look in the um, description of this video and you'll see all the different links to um, all the different resources, my findings, etc. And yeah, it would be absolutely amazing to see Derbyshire County Council 
take some kind of uh, accountability um, and get this sorted out once and for all uh, by whatever means it needs to use to do that. Um, so, yeah, um, let me know in the comments how you get on and what you think to this whole uh, situation. Um, but yeah, for now, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. A-Sword, it's out.